six months ago, I picked up my first rear wheel drive, my first manual car, and my first car with more than 400 horsepower. Not three different cars, all the same car. What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video, and welcome back to Vic Drives. So it's been actually exactly six months since I picked up our lovely baby in silver over there. Damn, we have so many things flying around right now. So I'm a firm believer that everybody that buys a new car kind of goes through like three stages over the first six months. So the first stage is, oh my god, I have a new car, it's my baby. You know, so you, you're washing it every week, you're doing, you're, you're pampering it, basically. Then stage two is the, oh, well, now I can't stop driving it phase, where you essentially take it everywhere, regardless of whether or not it should be going there. And if it's a replacement for a different car, then I guess you don't really have an option. But if it's your secondary car, chances are you are very quickly making it your primary car. And then phase three is basically you've kind of gotten used to it and it's just another one of the cars in the garage, another tool in the toolbox, if you will. My stages have been slightly different. So it started out as holy crap. And then stage two was holy crap. And then stage three was holy crap. And <laughs> I'm, I'm not entirely sure where we're going to go from here, but essentially, six months ago, I picked up my first rear-wheel drive, my first manual car, and my first car with more than 400 horsepower. Not three different cars, all the same car. And it's been a bit of a learning curve since. And really quickly, before we continue with the video, I just wanted to say, um, if you wanted to see more about this, I'm not really talking specifics about anything that I've done over the last six months, but I have made a playlist with all of our Corvette, Corvette content so far, um, so you can definitely go check that out um, on the channel page. And while you're there, why not just subscribe? My goal is to hit 100 subscribers by the end of the year, and I'm really hoping we can do that because I still have like four months left. Four? Five? Five months left? What month is it? August? So four months left. Um, but yeah, and if you do enjoy the video, then definitely be sure to leave it a like. Comment down below and let me know if you bought a car similar to this or if you would consider buying a car similar to this sometime in your lifetime. All right, back into the video. Well, the last six months have basically been more of a learning curve and more of a learning arc than I was expecting them to be. It basically started off as the first phase was, oh my God, I am driving a rear wheel drive, 400 horsepower manual car, and I've never done that before. So it was pretty much learning to navigate that, but not so much the horsepower. It was more, I'm aware of the horsepower and now I kind of need to be careful. Then like phase two, once I was kind of more familiar with like the driving dynamics of the car, I was getting more comfortable with stick, then the gas pedal started to travel a little bit more. Um, to give you an idea, I was doing around like 23 miles to the gallon when I first got it because I was driving like grandma and now I'm doing more like 15, 16 and that's still with a decent amount of just highway cruising. So, do with that information what you will. And the other thing I was getting used to kind of along the way is that this is basically a dedicated track car. So, it's very stiff, very low, very noisy, and that kind of takes some getting used to when you're used to driving around in a cushy giant SUV. But honestly, the driving dynamics are actually a lot nicer um, for me especially because I like feeling the road. 
maybe not so much on like a really long road trip or something like that but for you know normal daily short drives i love it i definitely i love being able to feel the road i love being able to kind of communicate through the car and this car definitely does that and in addition to that i've gone on a couple short road trips i've gone to autocross and you know just kind of drives around town have been super fun and being able to kind of make it my own um, has been a very interesting experience as well the shifter and like actually being able to drive a manual car not like borrowing a friend's car for like a couple minutes here and there and then trying to learn in it um, honestly fantastic but at the end of the day, I am still driving my first manual rear-wheel drive 400 plus horsepower car. And that's still a little bit intimidating. So it took a little bit of getting used to. And actually, I would say that the autocross made me more comfortable pushing it on the road than probably years of driving it on the road would have made me. Um, but. To be fair, I didn't really push it that hard at autocross either. It was like my first autocross and I was super nervous. And it was also raining for half the day and then not for the other half of the day. But, you know, you can watch that video if you want. And I mean, as for things that weren't so great, um, the shifter was kind of an issue at the beginning. Um, but obviously we remedied that. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch that up there. Um, there were a couple side marker lights and stuff like that that were cracked. Um, fix that. You can watch that video up there if you'd like. And I mean, like, the next thing that most people complain about is the interior. But honestly, to me, in, like, daily driving and all that kind of stuff, I don't really care. Um, the upgraded head unit was probably the best uh, move that the previous owner made in there. Um, and that's pretty much all I use. The heads-up display still works great, love it. The gauges are fantastic, but unfortunately can't really look at them all that much because the heads-up display is there, so I, sometimes I just turn the heads-up display off so I can look at the gauges, and that's pretty much it. I don't really use anything else in there, and to be honest, there isn't really much more in there. Uh, power seats are nice. The seats themselves are eh. But, you know, it's not, not the end of the world and definitely stuff that can be and probably will be upgraded down the line. So, I mean, through six months of ownership, I don't think I've ever really stopped being afraid <laughs> of this car, which is probably a good thing because if you do start to get a little cocky, this is the type of car that will make you pay for it. But I mean, after buying the car, values are still pretty stable. It's been a great car to drive. I've already put, I mean, it's not much, but I've put like 3,000 miles on it since I bought it, um, which, is, which is more than the previous owner put in like the last three years combined. So that's, you know, still not saying much, but slight customizations here and there and probably a few more to come in like the next couple of months and you know I love it and I honestly I will say this I was not planning on buying this car initially it kind of came out of nowhere but I mean at the end of the day it is a track focused car very stiff very loud but <laughs> I don't think there's been a single moment in the last six months that I've had the slightest regret in spending my money on this. And so there you go. Six months with the car. Was buying a 2004 C5 Z06 a mistake? No, not at all. And I honestly was considering, you know, a couple years down the road, I'd sell this and then go buy my R8 or you know, whatever else I decide to buy in the future. Um, but I think, yeah, I think this one will be with us for a little while. So 
Again, if you enjoyed the video, then definitely be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Help me get to 100 by the end of the year. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next one.